Welcome, powerful nonsenses. Hello. To another episode. Straight into your ear holes. Yes. Deep. If you're joining us for the first... <laughs> <laughs> What's that curly thing in your ear from biology? I can't... The cornea. What? You know the little curly thing? You remember in science it had that... They showed you the ear and it had like a little curly snail-shaped thing that your ear has inside it. Don't worry. I must have missed that class. I must have been ill How that did you day. Do, how did you do in science? I did all right. I got bees. You must know the thing. <laughs> There's something squiggly in your ear. I must have been ill for that day. It must not have come up on my exam either. Or if it did, that might be what cost me my A. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I'm going to send you a diagram later on. You'll be like, oh, that. Thanks. Anyway. I probably still won't have a clue what you're talking about. Anyway. I'm Jim Yildiz. And I am Wayne Ingram. And we're not here to talk about ears. <laughs> we're here to talk about education. Through your ears. Through your ears. As the receptors or the receivers or the... Both. This is what happens when we get to our last episode of the day. It kind of loses... And we haven't had lunch yet. Yeah, exactly. We're getting a bit delirious. <laughs> um, so, yes. So, we're going to talk about education. Mm-hmm. And we're going to talk about kind of like where we see things going, changes that might need to be made. Popular to debate way. about the future of education. Yeah. And... Because it's a, it's, a, it's a big thing for us. Like, education is really important to us. And we haven't actually talked about it for quite a while. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, we're going to throw around some, some ideas, basically. I think maybe we should start with where we think there's a danger for education. Because I think a lot of the news, I think a lot of the behaviours, especially of young people today, are kind mm-hmm. of like really questioning if education is for them. I mean, right. I can just use my little brother as an example. He just flunked all his GCSEs. And it was because he's going to be so grateful (laughs) for this in like five years. Yeah. When he's like, oh, yeah, just to remind everyone, this is the episode my brother told the world, but I flunked all my GCSEs. Cheers, bro. But it was this, he kind of sort of encapsulates this sort of like, um, I don't know, like lack of faith in the education system Mm -hmm. or this kind of, I don't know whether it's again through sort of like social media. I think there's a lot of sort of, popular successful people out there who have kind of branded education as a kind of f you i didn't do well mm-hmm. and it's kind of funny it was um i actually listened to a, an episode of i forgot what it's called this episode this um youtube channel i listened to yesterday and it's this um really interesting psychological term called the uh, survivorship bias survivorship bias yeah. this is one i've not heard i know i only heard it last night okay. and it's this idea that um based on our ability to um so what is popular in our minds so at the moment you've got all these youtubers who are super successful or these rappers or these businessmen who are basically saying look i fucked up at my grades in gcse or whatever i never went to school i was an f f city baby (laughs) like oh yeah 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 (laughs) go v f city and um this idea that um basically we're only seeing like for every person who got f city (laughs) on their grades there is somebody who got FC and is really failing right now and is struggling. And I think the survivorship bias is that we always look at the survivors of the negative thing that happened. Right. We don't look at everybody else who actually came out of it terribly because they got bad grades. Yeah. And I think a lot of, I think with the social media nowadays, I do think that we are inclined, and I think we have in our awareness, we're not going to kind of go watch a YouTube video about a guy who did really shy on his GCSEs or his grades and then is a failure now because mm-hmm. that kind of confirms what schools have been telling us for years that you don't get your grades, <laughs> yeah. you don't uh, you don't maybe get the job you want right. or earn the kind of salary you want. But right. we do love it when we see an F City who goes and makes a business which is a multi million pound business. And I think true, I didn't really think about putting those together, but it actually kind of is a thought yeah. that I think is quite important. No, that's very true. But I think as well, uh, like with your, with your brother, mm. I think there is an element of of that. But I think as well, there's also on the flip side, well, there's basically just a complete disconnect because unfortunately we're in this new revolution. We're in this new change of the way that the world works. We're in the information age. We're in the uh, consume, the mass consumer age, but it's not consumer of physical, it's consumer of digital. Um, so there's been this massive landscape shift And unfortunately, the people running education at the very top, the government and things like that, they're out of touch with what's actually going on 
on the streets. <laughs> <laughs> was that your urban accent? That's the... It was, it was kind of a half-assed attempt. Oh, okay. On the streets. There we go, that's better. A little better, a little better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the least you... urban person you will ever meet. Um, anyway. You won't be getting a uh, role in the hood. Or no, I automatically, if ever I see any any casting calls for anything that's even remotely urban, I'm like, no. <laughs> that, <laughs> you can do. That ain't me. Um, <laughs> anyway, so yeah, so the people at the top, they're kind of almost blissfully unaware with what's going on on the streets. The education, the people running education institutions, they're kind of starting to get it and the, but there's still this disconnect between what the government's telling them is a good thing to achieve versus what the universities are kind of going maybe it's certainly not but they have to do what the government wants them to do and and then you've got the students that are coming in that are going yeah but okay you're telling me i should get a degree but what does the degree get me because my older brother he got a degree and well that didn't go incredibly well for him in terms of getting the career that he wanted to get etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, because we are still kind of dealing with a bit of a fallout from 2008 admittedly but I think that's a lot to do with media hype and all that sort of stuff but anyway with regard to your brother I think there's this disconnect between what they're being sold through education versus actually what is really going on you, the reason your brother's so discontented with the education system is he's already making a shit ton of money doing shit ton, but <laughs> for his age oh, a yeah. shit ton of money for his age yeah, yeah. um i wish i was earning that money when i was uh, his age he's earning relatively speaking a shit ton of money for doing new some videos. yeah d- yeah doing new age mm. stuff that the education system hasn't gone you should go do this stuff so he's succeeding there and it's, again, it's the survivor bias because he's, he's doing well from it. But he's going, well, why do I need to do this stuff that I don't believe in, I'm not passionate about, it doesn't interest me? Why, do I, why am I forced to do that stuff when it's not actually doing anything for me in his eyes? Yeah, I think the sort of old school education narrative doesn't really, ra- re- um, doesn't really match the new mm, actual right. realistic narrative of what is required. And I think right. that's where I think most sort of education institutions are having a problem. And I think it's why we're seeing sort of this resurgence of um, uh, apprenticeships, especially. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, industries are saying... (laughs) Sounds like the place is falling down. Uh, (laughs) Industries saying, well, these these, uh, are your students you're creating, you're putting them through the system, but suddenly they're coming out and they're not... They don't have the mindsets we now require, they don't have the skill sets we now require. And I think a lot of it goes back to that sort of bureaucracy and the ability to be able to change the way we do education. It's such a big thing that actually it's, it's so hard to kind of switch it and actually right. nobody wants to really take the risk of knowing which direction to point it in because nobody really knows sorry about all the banging i don't yeah, know what's going on there very distracting for me there's some somebody's building something I don't know, it seems. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> shut <laughs> up anyway we've got a studio so that we can actually have a silence and then somebody decides actually get the hammer out let's put a new roof on this studio <laughs> <laughs> but hopefully you're not hearing that too much but yeah i think it's i think People know there needs to be a change, but nobody knows what the change, what the change is. And yeah. so nobody wants to say, well, I'm going to tweak it because that's a lot of pressure on anybody's shoulders to say, well, actually, this is how we should be teaching people. Right, exactly. And I, I think I think you kind of hit the nail on the head in saying that the narrative isn't matched up. Because, I, th- I mean, I was even talking with my dad about potential opportunities that have just arised and my dad was going, go for it. And I'm like, yeah, but that's not the lifestyle that I want. He's like, yeah, but you should go for it because it will open all these doors. And I'm not. And I had the conversation with him. I was saying, well, I'm not saying I know more than you than this, but there's a difference between my generation and your generation and what we strive for. We're not money driven to the same extent. I'm okay. Yes, we're still materialistic in many ways, um, but we're not. I don't. I think as a as a generation as a whole, money is not quite as important as it was. Yeah, we all want to be wealthy. Yeah, we all want to be affluent. But it isn't the driving force anymore. Yeah, I think their sort of generation had that sort of take what you can get. Yeah. Like when it comes, just take it because then you're lucky enough because then you'll be stable. And I think we're more sort of like, I think we obviously, we've spoke about this a lot. We're a little more heavily <laughs> influenced by this bang in this deep head. And, <laughs> I know. Um, we're more heavily influenced by the lifestyle. And I think that kind of goes back to previous episode where we sort of know about the awareness. And I think 
Um, I think kids nowadays that sit in a class and are told, like, yeah, well, you've got a suit on now when you're coming in from nine, you're leaving at three. Well, that's the same thing you're going to do in when you go into your work world, which does happen and people still do that. Mm-hmm. But I think it's becoming something that even now people are questioning, like, do I want to be stuck in an office from nine to five, traveling, all this sort of stuff? And I think that awareness is making young people especially say, you know what, this isn't for me. And you've got countries now cutting work days to five days a week got people that are innovating and understanding that actually the mindset of the people is changing and people are getting unhappy, people are getting mental health issues, people are getting stressed at work, people having... It was a funny stat, well, not a funny stat, but actually a bloody quite horrendous stat, but actually most heart attacks take place between 8 and 9 a.m. Really? On a Monday morning. And it, really? Yeah, there's the I biggest there's that. the biggest spike in heart attacks on a, between 8 and 9 a.m., on a Monday, and that's because people are going to jobs that they're not happy with. They're living lives that are very stressful. Wow. And I think it's quite scary, and I think that young people are just saying, like, do you know what, this isn't for me. Mm-hmm. I don't want to live my life that way. And actually, they are choosing a lifestyle over, a over like, the money and the house and the this and the that. And I think that's where education has got to be careful in how it's marking it's, itself because... A lot of the time, I think the marketing is is to a narrative that no longer exists, and I think yeah, it's 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 selling it's selling an uh, old dream yeah. that actually the current generation no longer seeks. But I think the current generation doesn't go. Yeah, do you know what? I want to work six days a week from eight till seven and feel blessed because I've got a career. But I do think that is definitely part of. That's still part, a massive part of the awareness. We've done talks at universities where we've come in there with our sort of entrepreneurial thinking and then you put your hands up and say to people, so who wants to be an entrepreneur or start a business? And sometimes you get a few here and there. But then a lot of the time people are like, well, no, I just want that stable job and that nine to yeah, five. and that is perfectly fine. And it's perfectly fine. But I think at the same time, I think, I think as soon, I always believe that as soon as somebody delves into why they want the nine to five they, or the job, that they look at it and they say, actually, no, I don't, want that nine to five because it's a job i want the nine to five because of the outcomes of what i think the job's going to give me right and actually the the truth is is actually a lot of those outcomes are far closer than people realize yeah. and i think we're getting to a point where because of people that are just it appears just sat at home turning on a camera chatting to their camera uploading it onto the internet because we are being given that kind of view of success Suddenly everybody's going, well, hang on, I can have all of those things that I wanted that nine to five for without the nine to five. Yeah. So then we're getting into a position where suddenly it's not about the security. It's not about the actual money. It's about the lifestyle that comes with the security and the money, except we're realizing that the security isn't necessary and the money isn't necessary either. You were saying <laughs> earlier, like the cost of going out and having fun has drastically dropping. There's more opportunity to go out and enjoy yourself than there has ever been. Even if you just sit at home and binge watch Netflix, you know, (laughs) that's super cheap. And and people can just get enjoyment out of whatever it is that they want to get enjoyment out. But the cost of livings continue to go up in terms of actual living costs, Mm -hmm. surviving costs, um, and wages aren't going up at any particularly fast rate. And so it becomes a case of actually it's costing me more in real terms to go to work in many ways. I'm sacrificing so much of this enjoyment that I can have for very little cost. Mm -hmm. And so it's completely out of balance. And so again, it becomes a thing of, well, do I spend a third of my life at work to only have another third of my life to enjoy myself? Or... Do I work less and enjoy myself more? Okay, yeah, I'm not earning as much money, but there's much more balance to my lifestyle. Yeah, I think it kind of touches on that uh, aspect that we spoke about in our episode about like lead with lifestyle. Mm-hmm. I think that is a massive um, consideration that a lot of educational institutions need to understand that actually, yes, I think uh, young people's mindsets are all about, I think they are leading with lifestyle over than just the outcome of getting a job. And that's mm-hmm. why I think there needs to be this massive shift in in the way they're going to end up marketing, but Mm -hmm. also in the way that they deliver their teaching as well. Because at the moment, people aren't kind of seeing the value based on like, what is it, like 40 grand now to get a a degree or something ridiculous. Something like that, yeah. And so people aren't tying the two together. And I think a majority probably you'll find that maybe a lot of people are coming out of universities. I don't know what the stats are, like how many are doing the 
jobs they wanted to do based on their degrees and stuff like that. But I think I don't think it's very high. Yeah. But I, I mean, I don't know the stats, but my, my gut instinct would be that it's not very high. Yes, I'm sure the people are more employable when they, I mean, the stats suggest it, well, yeah. that they are more employable when they... Yeah. Well, I think it's now their... become a bit more of a kind of like, well, you have to have this anyway. I remember I was right. doing a free internship or unpaid internship and they asked if you have a degree. That was one of the criteria. For an unpaid internship? Yeah, like they cover like travel and are food you serious? expenses. And that was when I left university. So it was saying that we're looking for someone who has a degree in this these kind of areas for, uh, for travel. An unpaid internship? Unpaid travel and food. So the prerequisite, the, the <laughs> cost of entry is, yes. a fo- is essentially 40 grand's worth of debt. For some experience, unpaid, yeah. For some, oh my God. OMG. But it did lead me to a job later on. Yeah, of course, <laughs> and, that, and that's where you have to weigh up. Yeah, that's another conversation for a <laughs> completely different thing. Yeah. But but I mean that's telling. Yeah, that's very telling. And that's what I mean. I think a degree is sort of minimum entry now. But I think that people are this whole uh, ex- um, work experience or ent- um, apprenticeships. It seems to be something that's coming up now quite mm-hmm. often, and people are getting experience, and you're finding people maybe coming out of degree, uh, coming out of their degree, and realizing that friend that didn't do a degree is now on like a very high salary right. and they've just got three or four years already experience in the industry right. and I'm sure we're going to touch upon that and why I think in the future I think we need to pull industry into education mm-hmm. if we want to basically make sure that there's value in there for the, the students that are going. Yeah, I agree. Right, cool. so let's take a break yes. and we'll come back and we'll look at all that stuff. Yep. Back in a sec. So we thought we'd just take a few seconds just to say thank you to our sponsor, Yep. University of Northampton. Huge thank you to them for supporting the show. Um, so, why should you check them out? Well, first of all, we're we alumni. Went we yes. went there. So everything that we kind of deliver to you it kind of comes from them in a way. Um, but also, they're not just about getting a degree. The thing we love about Northampton Uni from experience is the fact that you come out of your course with your degree, but also there's so many options on the table. They understand that it's not just about going out and getting a job anymore. It's also about the possibility of setting up your own business and becoming an entrepreneur. And to top that off, (laughs) it's not just about setting up a business. It's about setting up a social enterprise. That's their specialist area. So if you're thinking of setting up a business, it can also be one that's doing good to the world and delivering social impact. So check them out, northampton.ac.uk. And a huge thank you to them for supporting the show. Welcome back. Hello. So, <clears throat> we've identified some issues with the current state of education. Mm. Fixable issues. Yes. But issues all the same. <laughs> and issues that I think people are becoming, hy- people in the know are becoming hyper aware of as well. But as you alluded to, people know things need to change, but they don't quite know what the solution is. Now, we're not saying we have all the answers by any stretch of the imagination. But, but we, we want like to throw to some... Yeah, we like to speculate and throw around some ideas. So this is speculation. This is uh, throwing around ideas. This is like a, a brainstorm, if that is PC to say anymore. I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we're just going to throw th- some things around, see what sticks. Mm. Okay. So you mentioned before we went for our break, industry getting involved in education. Mm-hmm. Would you care to elaborate on that? Well, before I go into that, I just want to mention that I don't think there's going to be any change in the requirement in both education or, I mean, whatever you go into of, I think degrees are always going to now become that minimum thing that people look for. So I think in Mm. terms of like getting a job or whatever you do, I think there's, I think degree has now trumped the GCSE and I do think you get experience. (laughs) GCSE was trumped. Uh, I know well, it, it has. Yeah. I mean, wait, it's been an it's been <laughs> in. The, that's why I don't see there being any change in like people going to do a degree. Well, we have we have a sake of we have a case at the moment of diminishing returns. Yeah, because we call it education inflation, didn't we? In a few episodes. Oh ago. God, yes, yeah. that's a throwback. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we have a, a diminishing returns because it's all like go get your GCSEs because if you get your GCSEs, you're more employable. So then everybody's like. 
let's go get my GCSEs. So then they got their GCSEs and then everybody's got GCSEs. So <laughs> how do you differentiate? So then everybody goes, go get your A-levels because you'll be, it will look good on your CV because not everybody's going to have A-levels. So go get your A-levels. Then they go get their A-levels and then everybody's got their A-levels. And then they go, oh, you've all got your A-levels. Well done. Do you know what really make you stand out? A degree. Go get your degree. And then everybody goes, yeah, I'll go get my degree. And now we're in a state where every mofo has a degree. Uh-huh. <laughs> And I had a conversation with somebody who's just finished their degree and they were like, I'm going to go get a master's. I'm like, hang on, why are you getting a master's? She wants to be an actress. Sorry, she'll know who she is because we had this conversation. I'm like, why do you want to get a master's? Now, there was something to do with branding and stuff like that because drama schools are important for actors and whatever. But I was like, just wait. Wait for a few years, see if you're going to need your master's. Because from where I am right now, I don't think it's a good idea because you're going to spend a hell of a lot of money to do a master's, which is not going to change all that much. Admittedly, it's an acting de- acting degree, so it's slightly different, different industry. But I think we're going to just end up in the same position. Everybody's going to go get master's, and then after that, it's going to be like, oh, well, everybody's got a master's now. Who wants a PhD? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but I think he's getting to that, and uh, my girlfriend has two masters. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. But I think, back, tying back to your first question on the industry, and I think the bit where they're missing out on there is that it's, it's, it's kind of like stupid in some ways to get a degree based on an industry you have no idea on how it works. And mm-hmm. I was super naive when I came out of my degree thinking I'm just going to jump into TV and film. just didn't happen because I literally right. did not have a clue on how the right. industry worked. I never right. knew what kind of jobs are involved in there. And I think that's where... I think that's where there's a massive disconnect, I think. I, I think the disconnect ultimately... Sorry to cut you off. Are you just going to sum up this episode but, right now? No, no, no. I, I, I just don't want us to go down a certain route. Okay. Um, I think the disconnect, if anything, is that academia and everything is great. Having intellect and having knowledge is very important. It's vital. However, the disconnect that we have right now is that you go out there and you study all this stuff, right? But all, you have all that information at your disposal anyway with the internet. Okay, yeah, it does take learning how to siphon through what's the good and what's the bad and all that. But knowledge is not a commodity anymore. Mm-hmm. Because you can you can soak up knowledge in an instant. The disconnect that we have now application. is application and it's life skill and it's like going out and knowing how to manage your finances. It's knowing how to develop good relationships. It's knowing how to... Um, think laterally and things like that and that's i think is where the disconnect is and i think in the same way uh with with your uh degree as an example you have the knowledge you have the information you have the skills and the know-how to do it but you don't have the business knowledge that comes with which then took me a couple of years after to kind of apply like be able to know that and then to be able to make money from my degree and then freelance etc and i think what most people are in a state of now in terms of their uh, education thinking and I was actually the same the reason I trained as an actor was not necessarily because I was I mean obviously I wanted to improve my skills but the bigger thing for me was like I want to know what I need to do in the business side I want to know how I can further my career from a business I want to know who I need to talk to how I'm supposed to talk to them and there was a little bit of that in there but that wasn't it wasn't a huge part of my training and I and I found from other actors I've talked to it's the same for them it wasn't anything against my training in terms of specifics it's just I'm fine and I the same for your industry and I think mm-hmm. the same for most people that come out of the education system they have all this knowledge but don't have the skills and the life skills that they need to apply it. and I think that's that's where the window of opportunity is for education yeah and I think that's where I think it's so fast changing that I don't think universities can do it on their own because it's not their sole focus. I, I think industry is changing year on year because it has to kind of move with the market, move with the demand. And I think that's where if they can pull in aspects of how the market or people who are in the industry kind of surf in the waves and they're mm-hmm. kind of feeding back to the students because each year it's going to change. It's not worth changing a module for the next six years, this is the new module. We're going to talk about digital social media or something right. because who knows that could change, but the industry is constantly having to adapt month by month. And so by pulling them in, it kind of covers that ground in terms of we're not going to make a, a like I say, a bolt onto the the, the course right. of this new module. We're going to understand that this is a free flow module and this is where industry kind of fills that gap yeah. between the experience and the kind of like actually 
the education in a way uh-huh. it's kind of we've said it before like knowledge is not the people say knowledge is power but it's not power if it's not applicable yeah and i think that's where the industry can really help yeah i i agree i agree i think that's a really good idea though of having this this kind of free flow yeah it's not a bolt on so much as it is okay yeah it might be a module within within your degree but it's it's this it's very fast and loose it's not very like curriculum based it's not so much target based as just people in the industry coming in and going this is how i see it this is where things are moving currently because mm-hmm. next year that will have changed like mm-hmm. i mean if you were if you're in bloody uh, let's say you're doing an app development degree my god yeah, yeah, yeah i mean software it's, languages it's every year so. practically impossible to teach that uh, mm-hmm. and and for it not to be out of date before you've even got your degree um you that's, know that's where i do think as well like pulling in that sort of entrepreneurial um, like we, we were saying to, we went and met University of Northampton like last week. I think, I think entrepreneurship within any course is going to force people to know the current industry because mm-hmm. it forces them to use the skills in the moment right. to be able to create value. And I think if, if every course did that, then it forces people to learn the, learn the experience, learn the industry beforehand without maybe with support of industries that are already in that area. But if you go tell a, graphic designing student that actually I want you to start your own agency and you're going to you're going to recruit five of your your um colleagues who are in your class and I want you to go earn a thousand pound by going around the local area and and sell leaflet design or mm-hmm. poster design or something like that is going to force them to learn so many practical skills yeah. which are going to be applic- applicable the next year anyway so I think the quicker you can force entrepreneurship into courses the quicker you kind of Mm. force them to learn the current industry yeah and i think if you once you've got those sort of skill that skill set you can go out the next year and see what's changed and maybe you just right. i think to be honest i think if any student did that they would find wow man is the money and they'd carry on and so they'd be growing their businesses yep. while they're at the uni getting all this experience yeah having a portfolio to show people when they finish because let's be honest as well all of, all of the data is pointing us into a direction of a freelance economy mm-hmm all of it is going that way. And even if people are only doing it on the side, they're still generating income through freelance work and their own businesses. So if that is where the majority of the movement is going, why are we still trying to hold on to this? We're, we're like trying to build you up for a job or build you up for academia. We need to start guiding people in the in the direction of being able to prepare themselves for freelance because it's going that way. Whether or not we want to accept it, it is going that way because it's so easy to set up a business now. Mm-hmm. It's unbelievably easy to set up a business. Yeah, I think I think a degree has just become too static. And I think mm-hmm. by pulling in entrepreneurship, by pulling in collaboration between students, by forcing them into the market, I mean... I know on my course we had to actually, one thing I think thought was really great was we had to actually um, work with a, a local charity to produce a documentary to help them market their oh, charity. Oh, yeah, I remember you And for me, that. that was like the biggest sort of like, holy crap, there's going to be a company or a charity that's going to let me and my team mm-hmm. produce some promo content for them. And I thought that was the most practical part because yeah. it actually applied our skills to basically marketing or helping a charity. So yeah. I just think as much as universities can do that, as much as they yeah. can force collaboration between different courses you've got literally within a university you have like everybody you'd hire for a business like you've Mm. got your designers you've got your accountants you've got your this and this is where (laughs) i think and and do you know what actually it's funny because me and you had this do you remember in first year me and you had this very conversation in our kitchen talking (laughs) about uh, i mean we admittedly we were talking about it from an arts perspective um but we were talking about the ability that these education institutions have for mass collaboration across all the courses like if a university wanted to a university could set it up its own completely self-sufficient film studio Mm -hmm. with special effects makeup artists marketing journalism uh costume department your actors you've got your directors you you could set up this fully functioning film studio Mm -hmm. because you have you have the technology mm-hmm. uh, you can, you know, like you can do you have all of the all of the resources that you need and i think where i think there's a huge scope for education is to bring all of these elements in to creating this massively 
startup culture, basically. Yeah, in, yeah. Each in, university in, could be its own, like, Silicon Valley style in whatever what it wants to specialise in. And I think that's, if anything, by adopting that sort of mentality, you are kind of future-proofing your students in the mm-hmm. way that you are saying that, look, the world's different. You might have to go out there and create your own opportunity, which I think a lot of them want to do. We know that most young people say they do want to start or a high percentage, I think it's 50% say they want to start their own business. Mm-hmm. And I think just giving them the skill set and actually letting them apply their degrees, pulling mm-hmm. in industry to give them a little nod in the right direction, yeah. I think you're going to create fully rounded, like entrepreneurial students mm-hmm. who might then go into a company, might work nine to five, but yeah. they're going to have that sort of innovative brain because they've right. tried to build a business themselves. They know how to use skills of other people, other people, other people, people, people. They know right. how to collaborate. So I just think you know, the future lies in universities treating like you come to a place not just to study but actually to collaborate and to create something with everybody that's there like it's such mm-hmm. a perfect opportunity three years of your life to just learn but experiment. also experiment yeah. just to create and i think that's that's how they're going to win really and i think if the universities can create a culture where they make that such a key part of what they offer I think if you sell, if you try to sell stu- potential students on that rather than trying to sell them on, oh, look, here's 40 grand's worth of debt and you might not get a job at the end, but what you want is a job, I think it's going to fall flat and it is starting to fall flat. Mm-hmm. Like, again, if we, go back, if we go back to your brother, do you think your brother's going to get go and get a degree? No, it. <laughs> right. And the reason he's not going to get a degree is because he doesn't see the return on investment. But if you then market, actually, you've got a media course, which has like a team that, uh, and you can make your own team of YouTubers who are going to go create content together, collaborate. Yeah. That could, you could, it's kind of like that sort of like build your own course, but use yeah. the course material to then do the thing. I think universities are an optimal time to experiment. I think so. And I think if you use it wisely, like I think, I don't know, just the life skills you get from it are incredible. Yeah. It's just that you need to kind of be directed because I never went to university feeling entrepreneurial. I now can vis- I can see how much money or potential earnings I left on the table by not being like that in right. university. Yeah, me too. Because there's so much, so much I could have done. <laughs> me too. When you have the capability of the, the amount of people that are available at your fingertips, both, both um, teachers and lecturers with wealth of knowledge and experience, but also just your team, your friends around you, your classmates, the different courses. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we've 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 scratched the surface at best. Yeah, I feel like we didn't really. We've, we've get scratched into the... the surface at best. There's <laughs> so much meat that we've talked about over time, of where we can go in terms of selling. Ultimately, I think it's about selling uh, lifestyle over employment. That's if I could like sum it up. I think if you can sell lifestyle over employment and life skills over employment. I think that you're going to be... Yeah, I think it's just application, like how the the application part of the degree. It's all well and good Mm -hmm. having knowledge, but if it doesn't apply to the market or the demand, then Mm -hmm. you've got a a problem. And I think too much of the time, or we've just got stuck in that old school narrative of that factory mentality we're thinking, Mm -hmm. static way of get your degree and finish, where I think we need to really embrace that sort of flexibility mm-hmm. model and and i think i think it's self-sufficient the, students really. yeah and i th- it, i think it's the role of the the universities right now they're in this prime position to really try and revolutionize how we're educating people i really do cool right i think we need so, around two of that one though. i think so There's yeah so again more s- I to barely scratch the surface but we might have to focus in on something even more specific next time I think maybe next time we should do like what we see as the like a campus of the future or something. What would yeah. be involved if we could design our own uni? Yeah. What would we or that would be good. What would we expect? Yeah, that'd be good for a later time. For a later <laughs> yeah. time. Okay, so thanks very much for tuning in, guys. Uh, if you're watching on i no listening on, on iTunes, iTunes. Yeah. listening on iTunes, watching on YouTube, uh, please subscribe and leave us a review five stars or more and if you're watching on youtube then please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and give us a thumbs up we'll greatly appreciate it is it time for lunch it is really time for lunch me too so uh thanks for tuning in guys and we'll catch you next time see you later